Hey kid, you wanna join Team Rocket? Um, you know, you know what? Sure, let's do it. W wait, what? I said let's do it. Like I've been having some evil tendencies lately, and I'm I'm down. Let's freaking do this. Oh, okay. I've never had someone say yes before. What do I do? I'm not even a Team Rocket. I was just I was just joking. I wanted I wanted to battle him. I didn't want to sign some kid to a Team Rocket to this evil doing. Is this kid a freak? Is he like a super powerful traitor that wants to destroy the world? What do I do? Ah! Um, I'll have to get back to you. What is going on guys? This is Dobbs here bringing you another Pokemon video. And for this video, we're going to go over top 10 impossible things in Pokemon. And awesome enough, we have someone back on the channel that we haven't seen in three years. Allow me to introduce the Ori Guardian. Hi, I'm Alex. Back to help Dobbs with another video. And after you guys watch this video, you should definitely check out the video we did on Alex's channel going over 10 unfair things in Pokemon. It was a very fun video to make and I'm so glad that I was a part of it. So you should definitely check it out. And yeah, with that said, without further ado, let's get started. And number 10, impossible Pokemon combinations. There are both specific moves and abilities that, if they were on one Pokemon at the same time, they would probably break the game, the metagame at least. And one of these combinations that thankfully doesn't exist is No Guard and Fisher, specifically on Machamp. You see, one of Machamp's abilities is No Guard, which makes it so Machamp can't miss a move. The only drawback being that the opponent can't miss Machamp. Pretty good trade-off in my opinion. Well, in Generation 1, Machamp was able to learn the Oko move, Fisher, a move that's known for fainting the opponent if it hits, but has pretty abysmal accuracy. But with the No Guard ability, it ensures that Fisher will never miss, meaning that No Guard Machamp with Fisher could have been the most dangerous Pokemon in the entire game. But luckily Game Freak knew about this and didn't let it happen. In order to get Machamp with Fisher in the latest generation, you have to transfer one from the Virtual Console, since Machamp can only learn Fisher in the Generation 1 games. However, every Pokemon that's transferred this way gains their hidden ability, and Machamp's hidden ability is steadfast, not No Guard. And you can't ability capsule hidden abilities. So luckily, without hacking, this deadly combination of Fisher and No Guard is for now impossible. No, no. Now guys, during the research of this video, we might have discovered the worst Pokeball to ever exist because in certain conditions, this Pokeball can always fail. It's impossible to catch anything. So with that said, for number 9, we chose a Pokemon Sun and Moon Heavy Ball. Now this may be the first and only time in Pokemon history where a Pokeball has a 0% capture rate. Because even with the Beast Ball, the worst Pokeball to ever exist, in my opinion, has a 0.1% chance of catching a Pokemon. But for some reason in Pokemon Sun and Moon, the Heavy Ball can't even catch a Caterpie. A bug Pokemon that can only learn Tackle and String Shot. It's basically the Master Ball of guaranteeing a failed capture. And here's why. Now when you throw a Heavy Ball at a Pokemon that has a weight of under 225 pounds, the capture modifier is times by negative 20. And normally when a Pokemon's capture rate is in the negatives, it is just set back to 1, giving it a 1% capture rate. But for some reason in Sun and Moon, it isn't reverted back to 1, it, it just stays in the negatives. Therefore, making the Pokemon you're throwing a Heavy Ball at that's under 225 pounds impossible to capture, rendering your Heavy Ball completely useless and maybe the worst Pokeball to ever exist. So, if you ever wondered what the worst Pokeball was, it, it just might be the Heavy Ball because it's the only Pokeball of my knowledge that can have a 0% capture rate on a particular Pokemon, which is pretty funny and pretty interesting. Number eight. Number 8 is Impossible Moves. By this, I'm talking about moves that would be impossible for a Pokemon to have in a specific game legitimately however, are used by certain opponents. There are lots of examples of this, so I'll just be covering some of the more well-known and interesting ones. These include Lance that had two illegal Pokemon, one being an Aerodactyl that knew Rock Slide in Gold, Silver and Crystal, even though Aerodactyl couldn't learn Rock Slide until Generation 3, and a Dragonite in Red and Blue that knew Barrier, even though Dragonite couldn't have Barrier until Gen 6, 
and the only reason why Dragonite could eventually get Barrier is because in Gen 6 it was an event distributed based on Lance's Dragonite, that new Barrier. There's a cool trainer's lantern that knows Earthquake and Emerald, a move that Lantern cannot learn, a Totodile and Roselia in the Battle Hall in Platinum and Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Totodile knowing Brine, and Roselia knowing Sludge. Again, moves that they can't know, as well as an Anorith in the Battle Hall, that new Stone Edge, a move that Anorith itself couldn't learn, but its evolution could. There is a page full of these impossible moves that Pokemon shouldn't be able to know, so if you want to go through all of them, a link will be in the description. Number 7 Now this next one is pretty awesome because even with glitches, this Pokemon is impossible to encounter. So with that said, for number 7, we chose an Azure Flute Arceus. Now you know a Pokemon is pretty epic when, even with glitches, is impossible to encounter. And I wouldn't expect less from the god of all Pokemon, Arceus. I mean, I actually appreciate how rare this Pokemon is. But let's get down to why Arceus is in the status of impossibility. Because even though he's the god of Pokemon, there has to be some reason on why he, he can't be obtained. And to make a long story short, it just boils down to the Azure Flute. You see, the Azure Flute was supposed to be an event item given out to players to unlock Arceus by going to the Hall of Origin. But for some reason, Game Freak thought it was way too confusing for the player to figure out, so they just scrapped the whole idea and never released the event item, therefore making the Arceus impossible to obtain. Even with the notorious tweaking glitch that lets the player go to event-only areas to encounter mythical Pokemon doesn't work, because unlike Darkrai and Shaman, Arceus just isn't there, because the player has to have the Azure Flute in order to spawn it. Really, the only way to encounter this insanely rare Pokemon is to use a cheat device to hack the Azure Flute in. And then, and only then, you can go through the Hall of Origin and encounter the almighty Arceus. But honestly, it's pretty fitting that the god of Pokemon became this exclusive, because there's only a handful of events that actually distributed this legendary llama. So, if you ever wondered how to get the Azure Flute Arceus in the Hall of Origin, the short answer is, it's impossible. Unless you use a cheat device. Number 6 Number 6 is Impossible Pokedex Entries. The Pokedex is known to exaggerate from time to time, and in terms of the Dex Entries that contain the word impossible in them, here are some of the most interesting ones. Arbok's grip is apparently so tight that it's impossible to escape from, so probably not the ideal Pokemon to have in real life. Nests made by Furret are apparently made in such a way that they're impossible to enter, unless you're a Furret. Croconaw's jaws are so strong that if it bites down on something, they're impossible to remove. Probably another Pokemon you wouldn't want to have in real life. If Iglybuff starts bouncing, apparently it's impossible to stop, which definitely seems absurd, but if the deck says so, then hey. Hitmonchan's punches are so fast that they're impossible to see, which means they may rival Machamp's punches, since Machamp can apparently punch a thousand times in two seconds, and Jinx apparently speaks such gibberish that it's impossible to understand. And looking at Jinx, that's not too surprising. Number five. Now all of us love shiny Pokemon because seeing a Mon in a different colored palette is just amazing. But what is it amazing are Pokemon that are shiny locked, Pokemon that are impossible to shiny hunt because the coding just doesn't let you to. Well, for number five, we're gonna cover just that, impossible shiny Pokemon. Now, we all know in every Pokemon game, there is at least one Pokemon that is shiny locked. Ranging from the Pokemon Coliseum bonuses Celebi, who is shiny locked for just no reason, to Pokemon like Zygarde, who is just shiny locked be just because. But back in Generation 2, where it all started, the determination for shiny was completely different, because the shiny indicator went through an entire overhaul in Gen 3. And due to the fact that shiny Pokemon were calculated differently in the Gen 2 games, there were some pretty weird occurrences that caused some Pokemon to be shiny locked. Like, for example, one of the most infamous scenarios of a shiny locked Pokemon were female Pokemon, particularly Pokemon with a 1 to 7 female ratio. And the main reason was because their attack IV couldn't be higher than 1, where the necessary value for shininess needed to be 2. So this basically meant if a starter Pokemon was a female, it was impossible for it to be a shiny, because all starter Pokemon have a 1 to 7 female ratio. Another weird example was with the unknowns. The only two unknowns that were able to be shiny was the letter I and V unknowns. Which was kind of weird, because shininess was based on IVs, and only the IV unknowns could be shiny. I wonder if Game Freak did that on purpose to try to tell us something, if we were shiny hunting for unknowns. But anyways, needless to say that the Gen 2 games had some weird occurrences for shiny Pokemon. But at least there wasn't Pokemon that were shiny locks just because. Number 4 
Number 4. The Berry Glitch In order for this specific thing to become impossible, the player has to own a game cartridge that's pretty old, or logged in over 100 hours of gameplay. The games in question are Generation 3's Ruby and Sapphire. You see, in these games, if the player planted berries, they would grow over time. But if the cartridge has been owned for over a year, or had over 100 hours of gameplay logged in, a glitch would occur which meant berries could no longer grow, making growing berries completely impossible after a certain amount of time with these games. Luckily, all wasn't lost, as the player was able to fix this glitch by downloading a berry patch, which was either from Pokemon Emerald, Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green, or the Pokemon Colosseum bonus disc. But if you didn't have access to any of these, and your Ruby and Sapphire game had their time, say goodbye to planting berries in those games. Number three. Next up is something that I covered in a very recent top 10, but I couldn't resist adding to this video because it just fit perfectly. So with that said, for number three, I chose a Pokemon Pinball Mew. Now, in order to even encounter a Mew in Pokemon Pinball, you first have to beat every bonus stage at least twice. And then after that, you simply go into the game's catch-a mode, and then you have a 2% chance of encountering a Mew. But there's a catch. The Mew is impossible to capture. Even though you can encounter it, and it does have a catch rate, the circumstances that you're put in are just very unrealistic. Because the only way to legitimately capture this Mew is to hit it 1,024 times with the Pokeball. But guys, you only have 3 minutes to do this, and at the rate of hitting it non-stop with perfect inputs, you're lucky enough to hit it 30 or 40 times, nowhere near close to 1000 times. I feel like the developers were either trying to troll the player or wanting to keep the continuity of Mew's rarity. But dude, I, I really don't care about Mew's continuity in a pinball game. Like who cares if you catch her or not? Like, I don't. But at the same time, it's still interesting that Mew itself is catchable. But the time that you're given in order to catch it just makes it impossible. And ultimately, that is why I brought it back for this list. It's, it's a super cool impossibility in Pokemon. Number two. Number two. Catching them all. Is it possible to catch all eight generations of Pokemon currently in the game? No. Not only are there Pokemon not available on Sword and Shield, with a big chunk being completely removed from the game, but there are also specific Pokemon from past games that, even though they were programmed into the game, and sometimes are even possible to obtain, you still technically can't catch them due to having to breed them or being given to you as a gift through an event, being the case for most mythical Pokemon. However, there is a Pokemon game where it's possible to catch them all, from the Pokemon that are available, to the Pokemon that are not. And that game is... Pokemon Red and Blue. In Pokemon Red and Blue, there's a glitch that allows you to spawn any Pokemon without a cheat code, and because of how buggy the Gen 1 games are. These are so far the only Pokemon games that can perform this glitch. The glitch itself is pretty complicated and involves a ton of different actions like naming your rival, resetting the game at specific times, taking different routes, etc. But if you perform everything correctly, it's possible to spawn any of the original 151 Pokemon. There's even a speedrun category for Red and Blue called Catch 'em All, where people not only try to beat the game as fast as possible, but also have the entire Pokedex complete in the process with the current record holder being Smurfy, who somehow managed to beat the game alongside completing a full Pokedex in just 1 hour and 39 minutes. The speedrun consists of multiple different glitches, but if you perform everything correctly, you'll be able to come out with a completed game as well as a completed Pokedex in a pretty short amount of time. So, although it is technically impossible to catch them all in most Pokemon games, it's pretty awesome that here, it is possible. Now for number one, the most notorious impossibility in Pokemon, in our opinion, is transferring a Pokemon through all eight generations. Yes, unless there's some new development on transferring a Pokemon from the original cartridge games, this is without a doubt 100% impossible to do, and it is for one simple reason. The data format changed a ton in Gen 3, which therefore made transferring Generation 2 Pokemon impossible. And on top of the massive data change, the link cable wouldn't be compatible as well, because the voltage and circuitry are incompatible when it comes to trading Pokemon, at least when you're going from Generation 2 to Generation 3. And honestly, I think we're fortunate that we're not able to do this, because you will see nothing but no guard Fisher, but champs everywhere, and maybe even missing those that would just corrupt future games. It would be a complete nightmare. 
And there you go, the top 10 impossible things in Pokemon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like if you did because I appreciate it a ton. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe because I upload pretty frequently now being a full-time YouTuber and all. And don't forget to ring that bell because that notifies you even more. And if you want to be even more awesome, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even join my Discord server because all those platforms are super cool. And also, if you're looking for stream gear or anything like that, you should definitely check out my Elgato link down below because I am partnered with them and they are awesome. And just by visiting the link helps me out a ton, so I really appreciate it. And don't forget to check out the video we did on Alex's channel because that video was awesome and you should definitely check it out because we did it together. Go check it out. And finally, for the question of the video, what thing in Pokemon do you know that's impossible? Be sure to let me know down below in the comments because I'm going to read those comments and reply to them and be like, Whoa, that's crazy. And yeah, that's all for this video, and I will see you guys next time. See ya!